Welcome. St. Paul family. Hey. Thank you for coming today's prayer and worship experience with us. Yeah. Um. Pray with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will, will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us into temptation, deliver us from evil, for as the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. It's Reggie, it's Caden, and we love to have you. Thanks for coming through. All right, y'all. Let's go.
with your name on it. 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 I got my good man Caden here with me, and we're here to give you this week's announcements. Today, we will talk about um, how um, we're doing a different um, set of homeless things for, a for the 23rd year of Warm Nights. Okay, what we got for them this? What we doing for them this year? This year, we are um, ex accepting. We are accepting donations and giving things to people. For example, Tide Pods. Oh yeah, we got that. We got all that. Socks, thermal socks. Yeah. And w wipes and hand warmers. Cool. But look, this year, we I know we said that uh, it could be gently used clothes, but we're urging people to provide brand new clothing. Um, that's a, a, a another prerequisite to our donations. If you don't mind, we appreciate it. And it's more clean, so we can help the homeless because it's more requested and it's better. Yeah, we the better we're gonna do the best we can as people of God, you know. And look, while we're doing and fulfilling the work of the Most High, guess what? We're gonna talk about this devotion. This week's devotional is knowing your why, finding and fulfilling your calling. 
It's clear that this young man's calling is being a person that can speak to the people. So we're gonna help him fulfill his calling and we can help you fulfill your calling. So, you know, once you come by the church and see if there's a spot where you can volunteer and help us out around the house of God. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And also, if you wanna join us Monday through Friday on the St. Paul Prayer Call, you can call us at 605-313 5874. The access code is 390-060. There's no better way to start the day. With a prayer call. Exactly. Because why? The St. Paul people are cool, right? Yep. Okay. And you know what cool means? Do you know what cool means? Yes, I do. And it means coming to St. Paul or just watching it. But we would love to see you guys come. Hey, you heard it from the source, man. Come through, enjoy, see us. You know, the pastor also has some more information about in-person worship, so we'll let him handle that part. But in the meantime, you know, you can go to all our St. Paul socials, all our St. Paul channels. You can go to the website, www.stpaul.org. And what else? You can, you can call us and make arrangements for food on Thursdays at 301-567-4433. On Thursdays, pull up, get your food. We are gonna just get it to you. You can go on about your business. And on Fridays, in partnership with TCRC and Trader Joe, starting at 3 p.m., you can pull up, get some produce, pull off, and enjoy your weekend. So come through, get it together, He's got his thing he's trying to do, so help him out. We're going we to rally around the young man. We're going to make the 23rd year warm night something spectacular. Ain't that right? Yep. All right. All right, y'all. All right, pastor. Say your things. <laughs> Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, Caden. Good morning, St. Paul Church. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, Reggie and Caden gave us so ably this week's announcements, and we thank them for that. Listen, the big thing that we need you to know, remember, we are gearing up and getting ready for Warm Nights 2023. This is our 23rd year of Warm Nights. Yes, for over two decades, we have been blessing people who are without homes in the Prince George's County community. As you know, this year is a big one. We've got 40 women that we want to bless. We've got 42 men that we want to bless and 75 children. So we need your help. You can make cash donations through our offerings. You can also drop off things on Sunday mornings. As Kaden told you, we need clean cleaning supplies. We need Tide Pods. We need socks. Socks is one of the big things in homeless shelters that really make a difference in the life and quality of life for the people who are there. So if you can bring by some socks, we'd love to have them. Listen, you, as you know, you can drop off things on Sunday mornings during worship service. But we're also collecting during the first week of May. We'll have some daytime drop-offs, some evening drop-offs. But we want to make this 23rd year our biggest and best yet. We want to be a blessing. Listen, if you can't do socks, if you can't go shopping, you can always do gift cards. Target, Walmart, local grocery stores, all of those work. And we thank you in advance for your participation because we know that at St. Paul, we love God, we love people, and we serve the world. Listen, this week at the church, we have a very special thing going on. This Friday night, we are going to be airing a movie called My Brother's Crossing. My Brother's Crossing is a true story of how a community had to get past racial and social divisions after a tragedy in Southern Virginia. And we're going to be airing that movie here at 6... Uh, the doors will open at 6.30 p.m. and we'll be starting the movie at 7. But this is what I want you to know. This is going to be really special because My Brother's Crossing is a true story and the men who were the who were the foundation of the movie. In other words, the people who the movie was about are going to be here with us. After we air the movie, we are going to do a Q&A with the men who the movie is based on their lives. So we want you to be a part of it. Again, 6.30 p.m., the doors open, 7 o'clock the movie starts, and immediately following the movie, we'll be having a Q&A and a talk back with the people who the, whose lives were changed and this movie is based on. So we want you to join us. 6 uh 6 30 p.m starting movie starting at 7 this friday here at the church listen always remember i, I want to pray for you i want you to be a part of the pastor's prayer list so if you need prayer 
If you need prayer, I want to pray for you by name and by need. So all you got to do is go to our website, www.stpauloxahill.org, and under the ministries tab, just click pastor's prayer list, and you'll be able to give me your name, your need, and I'll be praying for you. Listen, St. Paul, uh, you know, we are on the back end of the pandemic. So the reentry committee met this week and we are coming and we have some new announcements about protocols for Sunday worship at the church. These are some of the things that we're going to be doing differently. First off, we are making masks optional. That's right. If you are comfortable not wearing a mask, listen, we want to see your pretty face. But if you still want to wear a mask, if that makes you more comfortable, you can do that too. So masks are now optional at the St. Paul Church. Also want to let you know, there's no more registration. The doors of the church are completely and officially open. So all you got to do is just come on to church. We'd love to have you in the building. So those are two the two big things that we wanted to make sure that you understood. Masks are optional. There's no more pre-registration. The doors of the church are open and we want to make church as much of a normative and enjoyable experience as we can because we want to see you online. But when you want to be here, we want to see your face in the place. St. Paul Church, it's time for morning offering. We thank you for your faithful financial support of our ministry. Your faithful financial support allows us to impact lives, allows us to change the world, allows us to do work in the community, and most importantly, allows us to spread the gospel of Christ. So we thank you for your faithful tithe, your faithful offering, your faithful extra mile giving. It's because you do that that we're a strong ministry making a strong impact for our all-powerful God. So St. Paul, let's get together right now and let's give. There are multiple ways that you can give to the St. Paul Church. You can give by clicking on the link on the screen in front of you. You can also give by going to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org and pressing the Give tab. If you want to give by using your cell phone, you can give through the Givelify app. Just search for St. Paul Church in Oxen Hill and you'll find a picture of me and a picture of the church so you know you're giving to the right place and you can give safely and securely there. Last but not least, you can always mail your tithes and offerings to the St. Paul Church. You can mail them to 6634 St. Barnabas Road, Oxon Hill, Maryland, 20745, Attention Finance Ministry. As you give, remember what the word tells us. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, let's give abundantly unto the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain There is power in the name Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising Chain, break every chain to 
break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Amen. Listen, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. This week, join me in the book of Jeremiah as we read from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. This is what the word of God says. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and to say whatever I command you to. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. The Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you brought us together for word and witness today. We thank you that you have a word for us that will enliven our hearts and inspire our minds. So God, right now, open our ears so that we may hear. Open our minds so that we may understand. But open our hearts so that we may receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to tag this text today because God said so. You know, an interesting thing is many of us want to know why we're here. We want to know what our purpose is. We want to know who we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to live, what we're supposed to do. Over and over again, people search to figure out their purpose. They search to figure out their gifting. They search to figure out their calling. They search to figure out what destiny they're supposed to be walking into. There is nothing worse than living a life off destiny, living a life off path, living a life that frustrates you because you know there's more, you know there's something else you're supposed to be, someone else you're supposed to be, and something else you're supposed to do, but you just can't figure it out. Mark Twain famously said, the two most important days in a person's life are the day that they're born and the day that they find out why. 
I believe Twain says this because the day that you're born is the day that the clock starts on your life and your living. But the day that you find out why is the day that clarifies and gives you purpose. It's the day that allows you to say yes to some things and no to other things. It's the day that allows you to know that you were not a mistake, that you were not here by accident, you were not here by happenstance, and you were not here by chance. You are here on purpose, for a purpose, and for a reason. But many of us, if we're completely honest, spend a good amount of time trying to figure out who we are, trying to figure out what we're supposed to be doing, trying to figure out why we're here and what our destiny is. But I want you to understand today that once you've figured out the who, once you've figured out the why, once you've figured out the what, be very clear, knowing your destiny is not I repeat, not a get out of jail free card. What do I mean by it's not a get out of jail free card? It's not a ticket to living an easy life. It's not a ticket to walking up a glass staircase. It's not a ticket to walking rose colored, wearing rose colored glasses or walking a rose covered path. I want you to understand that once you find out who you are and what God has for you, once you understand your calling, your purpose and your destiny, you become dangerous to the devil. That's right, I said it, I want you to understand it. Once you know who you are, and you start living in the purpose that God created you for, you become dangerous to the devil. The devil loves folk who are off plan. The devil loves people who are off path. The devil loves people who are going here, there, and everywhere. Folk who one day they want to be a doctor, another day they want to be a lawyer, another day they want to be a marine biologist, and another day they want to be a rapper. Because as long as you're spending your time, as long as you're going place to place, as long as you're not gaining ground, as long as you're not taking territory, or the enemy has no issue with you. But the day you figure it out, the day you hear the voice of the Lord, the day that you know what God has for you and what God wants for you is the day when you become dangerous because you'll start taking ground and you'll start moving forward. As we look at the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is one of the better known prophets in the Bible. He's one of the major prophets of the Bible. As a matter of fact, the book of Jeremiah is the book of the Bible that has the most words in it. Many folk would think that it was the book of Psalms, but no, the book of Jeremiah has more words than the book of Psalms. Not more chapters, but more words. In other words, Jeremiah had something to say. God had given Jeremiah something to do, and we find it written in the work of the book of, the Jerem in the book of Jeremiah. Many of us know some of Jeremiah is greatest stuff. Many of us, we can quote Jeremiah by heart. We know Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Many of us, we have memorized that. We have written that down. We know it. Some of us, it's our life verse. It's the verse of encouragement that we go to whenever we're in trouble. And I've always wondered what made Jeremiah write that? Jeremiah wrote that because God was giving him a prophecy for the people of Israel. God was telling them how they would get through captivity, how they would deal with being in, how they would deal with being in Babylon, how they would deal with being being shunned and spread out into the diaspora. But I would venture to say that this was also a reminder to Jeremiah, not just a vast reminder for the people, but a reminder for him for him himself. Many times in life, I want you to understand the thing that pulls us away from destiny when we know what it is. The thing that pulls us away from the work and the will of God is that we get discouraged along the way. We run into obstacles along the way. We run into people along the way. And what we thought would be an easy path because we knew where we were going and we knew what we were supposed to do becomes a dangerous path fraught with distractions that are trying to pull us off the path. Jeremiah, for his prop for as powerful as this verse of scripture is, for as many of us that know it, don't realize that commentators have called Jeremiah the weeping prophet. Jeremiah's entire ministry was speaking truth to power. Jeremiah's entire ministry was a warning to people about what God was going to do. And it was so bad. Watch this. Jeremiah was beaten. Jeremiah was derided. Jeremiah was locked up. The king actually told him, stop prophesying. Stop telling me that we're going to be overtaken. Stop telling me we're going to be overthrown. Stop telling me what God is going to do. You're driving me nuts. Just stop it. And Jeremiah wouldn't stop. Jeremiah was, Jeremiah was before puppy. He was like, can't stop, won't stop. And here's the problem. 
As much as he had gone through, Jeremiah, watch this, was derided by people, spit on by children. They made fun of him. They laughed at him. They threw rocks at him. It was so bad that Jeremiah wanted to give up. Can you imagine wanting to give up on your destiny? Can you imagine wanting to give up on your purpose? But it had gotten that bad for Jeremiah. You look at Jeremiah chapter 20, starting in verse 7. Look what the Bible says. Jeremiah complains to God. Jeremiah says, oh, Lord, you induced me and I was persuaded. You're stronger than I am and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For when I spoke, I cried out, I shouted violence and plunder because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. Look what Jeremiah is saying. Lord, I've been following you. Lord, I've been doing your will. Lord, I've been doing what you said. You told me what to do. I followed it and look at where it's gotten me. Have you ever been in a place where you were following the Lord? You were doing the Lord's work. You were trying to be on purpose. You were trying to be on task. You were praying. You were reading your Bible. You were on the prayer call. You were showing up for worship. You were tithing. You were making an offer. You were doing everything everything right and it seemed like the more you did right the more things went wrong that's where Jeremiah finds himself he says you talked me into this I didn't want to do it in the first place but you were stronger than me you persuaded me but now they make fun of me every day they mock me every day I cried out and shouted I gave the word of the Lord and now it's a reproach to me they're not even mad at you they're mad at me but it's still shut up in my bones. I still have to do it. I still want to. I was weary from trying to hold it back. In other words, I had made up my mind. I ain't doing this no more. I had made up my mind. Go find somebody else. But the problem is I couldn't hold it back. I couldn't hold it in. He says, I heard many mocking me. There's fear on every side. Report, they say, and we'll report it. All my acquaintances watch for my stumbling, saying perhaps he can be induced. We can get him to stop doing this. Then we'll prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. But the Lord, look at what Jeremiah says, with all I'm dealing with, with all I'm going through, with all that's happening, I've lost friends, I've lost family, folk make fun of me. And this way he says, but the Lord is with me as a mighty, awesome one. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed and they will not prosper. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. Look what Jeremiah says, with all I'm going through, but the Lord is with me. And here's the question that I asked Jeremiah. Here's the question that comes to my mind. If I got to sit down and interview Jeremiah one-on-one, -on -one, my question to Jeremiah would be, how did you keep going? How did you not give up? And he says, the Lord is with me. And we all know there are times when we know the Lord is with us, even in bad times. He says, the Lord is mighty. We all know the Lord is mighty and is with us. And the Lord can make a way out of no way. But my question would be from a practical standpoint, how did you do it? And this is what I heard Jeremiah speak to me from beyond through the voice of God. Because I remembered what God said. I want you to understand one of the most powerful things that we can do in this world is remember what God said. When God comes to Jeremiah, God is very clear with Jeremiah about what he's supposed to do, who he's supposed to be, and how he's supposed to go. So Jeremiah realizes that even in confusion, even in derision, even when people come against me, I have to go watch this because God said so. I need somebody to understand that in your life there are going to be times when the only response you will have will be because God said so. People will be wondering why you're doing this. People will be wondering how you're keeping on. People will be wondering why you won't give up. And the answer is simply because God said so. But you've got to know what God said. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 1, starting in verse 4, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Look at what the Bible's telling us. God is telling the Bible is telling us that God came directly to Jeremiah and told him, listen, I've had something in mind for you from the beginning. I want y'all to understand that you got to know that God has had something in mind for you since the beginning. God has had something in mind for you before you got here. From the time in the beginning of cosmos, God has had something in mind for you, something in mind for your life. Understand, God has no beginning and no end. God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. And God is in all the details in between. So from the very first time that God said, let there be light, God knew what he was going to do who he was going to need and how he was going to assign things. The Bible tells us that God comes to him and says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I want you to understand when God starts his plan, he knows exactly who you are. I want somebody to know you're wondering who you are. You're wondering why you're the way you are. You're wondering why this weird amalgamation of gifts, talents, this weird amalgamation of strengths and weaknesses come together in you because before you were born, God knew exactly what he was doing. Before you were in your mother's womb, God knew exactly who you were. And watch this. God is a God of decency and order. So if God knows you, he has a purpose for you. Understand the Bible tells in a Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. We are, all, we are all God's masterpieces. He has created anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. That's right. Just like Jeremiah, God has a plan for you. God has created for you from the beginning with something in mind. God has created you from the beginning with a specific purpose, a specific task. And watch this. He's given you a specific set of gifts to do it with. Watch what the Bible says. He says, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I want you to know when you got here, there was an assignment on your life. When you got here, there was something God had for you to do. When you got here, it was not random. It was not by happenstance. You may think it was random. You may think my mother and father didn't plan to have me. I was born out of wedlock. I was not planned. They did not have everything in mind. The No matter what mommy and daddy had in mind and whether you knew mommy or daddy, God had something in mind. God had something in mind that God was going to do when you got here specifically through you. He tells Jeremiah before you got here, I had appointed you a prophet. I had a sign on your life that you would speak for me. I had a sign on your life that you would be my mouthpiece. I had a sign on your life that you would open your mouth and speak my words. And I want you to understand the truth of the matter is simply this. You may not be called to be a prophet. You may not be called to be a preacher, but God has an assignment on your life. God has something that he has for you to do. God called me to be a preacher. God called me to spread his word. But can I let you in on something? Some of you God has called to teach. Some of you God has called to heal. Some of you God has called to be a comforter of folk. Some of you God has called to give advice. Some of you God has called to be nurturing. Some of you God has called to make a way for others who can't make a way for themselves. Let me take it a step further. Some of you God has called to create programs and to create computers that will be a blessing to the world and not pull the world apart. Some of you God has called to use your visual and creative gifts to be able to do art that shows people the beauty and glory of God. Some of you God has called to stand with a camera and film so that the word of God can go out throughout all the land. God has something that he's called you to do and he knew it from the beginning. The challenge for many of us is that we look everywhere except God to figure out who God has made us to be. Notice the Bible tells us that God starts off by telling Jeremiah everything he needs to know. And this is what Jeremiah says in response. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak and I'm too young. Look at what Jeremiah is doing. Jeremiah is contradicting himself in his own speech. Notice what he says. He says, alas, sovereign Lord, I don't know how to talk and I'm too young. Let's start at the back. He's arguing with God that he's not equipped and he's not old enough. He's arguing with God that he doesn't have the ability to do what God has assigned. But he starts off by saying that God is sovereign. 
I want you to understand that the things that you think disqualify you, the things that you think make it not for you, the things that you think make you not the one, the person that gave them to you is a sovereign God. Sovereign means that God can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do, how he wants to do it, with whoever he wants to do it. God don't need no permission. God don't need no talk back. God don't need to ask. God don't need to inquire. God is sovereign, which means that when God makes a decision, the decision is made. When God makes a choice, the choice is made. When God sets something in motion, it's set in motion. He doesn't need to approve it. He doesn't need to go to a board. He doesn't need to ask you what you want for him to be sovereign and say, this is what you shall do. Here's the challenge that we have. Many of us sit around and we want to be the creation telling the creator why we were created. Too many of us, we want to tell God what our preference is and not trust God to be sovereign in our lives. We want to tell God, but God, I would rather. But God, that's not my personality. But God, that's not how I am. You're telling the God who made you how you are and how you are not. Can you imagine telling God? who made you the way you are. God who knows how many hairs are on your head. God who knew how tall you would be before you were born. God who knew how wide you would be before you got here. That's not how I am. Do not discount what God has done because it makes you uncomfortable. Be very clear. Like many of us, Jeremiah was uncomfortable with the call on his life. Many of us, if we're completely honest, we would prefer to sit down with God and take some tests. We're going we're gonna to take a strength finders test so we can know what we're good at. We, we, we're going to take uh, some personality tests. We want to know our Myers-Briggs so we can know whether we're an INTJ or an INSP. We want to make sure we, we want to put all these things together so we can understand us and give God our profile for what we think we should do. Here's the problem. Before you did your strength finder, before you did your Myers brick, God said, I knew you and I put that in you. So here's the question. Will you trust God with your destiny or are you convinced that you can do it yourself? Will you trust God? with what God has put in you, what God has put on you, and what God is calling you to, or are you willing to try to figure it out on your own? I don't know about you, but I like clarity from God so that I can move in what God says. When I have clarity from God, I have the ability to say yes or no to things because they either do or do not line up with what God has already said. Let me show you something. When you have clarity from God, you have bravery and courage because you can say yes or no with no ambiguity in your mind because it either lines up or it does not. Here it is. After he argues with God, look what God tells him. But the Lord said to me, don't say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to. Don't be afraid of them because I'm going with you. I want you to understand on the path to your destiny, on the path to what God has called you to. Yeah. Yeah. You may be afraid. Yeah, you may be intimidated. You may think you're too young. You may think you're too old. You may think you're all kinds of things. But what God is saying, you have to do this and I'm going with you. I want you to understand when God is going with you, things turn out well. When God is going with you, it doesn't matter what happens in front of you. God will be there. Understand if you walk through the, if you walk through the catacombs of scripture, you will find out that when God was with somebody, things worked out. God was with Joseph when he was in the pit, but God was with Joseph when he was at Potiphar's. God was with Joseph when he was in jail, and God was with Joseph when he became the prime minister of Egypt. God was with David when David showed up to bring his friends to bring his family lunch but God was with David when he walked down in the valley and struck Goliath in the head. God was with Jesus when Jesus was healing the sick God was with Jesus when Jesus was on the cross and God was with Jesus when he raised him from the dead. God was with Paul when Paul was persecuting the church and God was with Paul when Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus and his life was changed and God was with Paul as he went around Asia Minor planting churches and I want you to understand 
understand that if God can be with Joseph, if God can be with David, if God can be with Moses, if God can be with Noah, if God can be with Ruth, if God can be with Paul, God can be with you right here in Oxon Hill. God can be with you right there in Fort Washington. God can be with you right there in Houston. God can be with you right there in Kissimmee, Florida. God can be with you right there in St. Croix. God is not limited by where you are. God goes where he sent you. You just have to go with him because he's going with you. And when God is with you, things work out. When God is with you, things go fine. When God is with you, things begin to turn in your favor that seem like they should be favorless. Here it is. Tells them, not only am I with you, but you don't have to be afraid because if it goes bad, I still got you. What, I'm sorry, let me translate. That, that was Daryl L. Williams. Let, let me say what it says. He says, watch this. Go wherever I say. Do not be afraid of them, for I'm with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. That's what I mean when God says, I got you. In other words, you don't have to be afraid that it'll go wrong because if you're on the assignment I gave you, I got you. How could Jeremiah keep going when he was derided? How could Jeremiah keep going when they threw rocks at him? How could Jeremiah keep going when everybody was talking about him? God had told him already, don't be afraid of them. I will rescue you. Notice, God sometimes sneaks stuff in that we have to be really clear about. God says, don't be afraid of them. In other words, God wants you to know the same way God wanted Jeremiah to know. There will always be opposition. Too many times in life, I've said this before and I'll say it again, say it until folk get it. The sign that you are on the right path is not necessarily that there is no opposition. Sometimes the sign that you're on the right path is that you are running into opposition, that you are running into challenges, that you are running into crossroads, that you are running into people who don't like you, that you are running into mean faces, that you are running into discouragement. Sometimes that's the sign that you're doing it right because watch this, when you start taking ground for God, when you start taking ground for the kingdom, you begin to realize that the enemy is going to buck up because he wants his stuff back. The enemy wants his ground back. The enemy wants his place back. Understand, when you start taking ground for the kingdom in your family. The enemy will cause harassment. The enemy will cause challenges. The enemy will cause strife because when you start taking your family back for God, you're taking it from the enemy. When you start taking God into your school, into your work, into the places you go, the enemy will get frustrated because you're taking ground back that he thought he had conquered. And look, look what God says. If it gets bad, I got you. I will rescue you. I will pull you out, which is your sign to keep going. If it gets bad enough, I will rescue you. That's why I always ask, Jeremiah, how did you keep going? I knew that God was with me and that God would rescue me. Be clear, Jeremiah was beaten, Jeremiah was spit on, Jeremiah was talked about, but Jeremiah was never killed. Because God pulled him out. God got him through. God made a way when it seemed like there would be no way. And look what the Bible says. God tells him, you're going to run into opposition. You're going to run into problems. On the road to your destiny, it ain't always going to be easy. But I'm going to be with you and I will rescue you. And then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot, tear down, destroy, overthrow, build, and plant. In other words, look at what God's telling him. I'm equipping you for what's next. I want you to understand. God knew you from the womb, but God has equipped you for what's ahead. When I say God has equipped you, what I want you to understand is things that you don't think go together, God is fitting together. Things that you're not sure why God has given you the ability to do. God is 
fitting those things together because he has equipped you for what he's calling you into. He has given you the personality traits. He has given you the skill set. He has given you the connection. Too many of us, watch this, we are trying to become someone else to be who God called us to be. What I want you to understand is people will deny who you are because they don't understand it, but you don't have to become someone else to be who God called you to be. You can read all the self-help you want to. You can read all the growth books you want to, but don't grow out of you to be who they think you should be when God has said, this is who I created. God has said, this is who I have anointed. God has said, this is who I have assigned. God has said, this is who I know. Don't become so different that you become unknown to the God that created you. Because at the end of the day, when you're walking in destiny, when you're walking on the path of faithfulness, when you're walking in the path of righteousness, when God is walking with you and you're doing God's work, you will run into problems. You will run into issues. You will run into people. And you've got to just have it up in your mind that the reason you keep going, the reason you can keep pushing through is because God said so. When folk ask you, who do you think you are that you can do this? I can do this because God said so. Who do you think you are that you're walking in here like that I can do that because God said so. Who do you think you are that you can start this business? I think I can do it because God said so. Who do you think you are that you can go back to school? I can do it because God said so. Who do you think you are that you can preach his word? I can do it because God said so. Who do you think you are that you want to stand up to us, not back down and keep pushing through? I can do it because God said so. And I want you to know that there will be things in your life. There will be challenges in your life. There will be times in your life. But you can make it because God said so. God said so when he told you who you were. God said so before you were born. But God said so on a hill called Golgotha. When Jesus Christ hung, bled, and died for our sins and overcame sin, death, and the grave, that was God saying, nothing can stop me and nothing can stop you. So I've come today to tell you, stay in your purpose. Walk in your purpose. Live in your purpose. Not because you want to. Not because people appreciate it. Not because of anything other than because God said so. And you will make it. You will get by, you will get through, and you will get to God where he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And when people ask you what your testimony is, how did you make it, how did you do it? You have the same testimony as Jeremiah. It got hard, folk talked bad about me. Things went left sometimes, but I kept pushing, I kept going, and I kept making it because God said so. Thank you for joining us today. Listen, you can make it because God said so. God has a calling and anointing and a destiny on your life. And because God said so, no matter what you run into, you can face it and you can have victory in it. But you can only have victory because God said so if you know God for yourself. So if you're unsaved, if you're unsure, if you don't know God in the parting of your sins, if you don't know God for yourself and you're not hearing from him, that means you need to be saved. That means that you need to be in touch with God. That means that you need to be connected with God. We want that for you here at the St. Paul Church. So go to our website, www.stpauloxahill.org, and under contact us, there'll be an option there for you. If you're watching us live right now, in the chat, there's a link. All you got to do is click that, and we will reach right out to you because there's nothing more important to us than your soul's salvation. And why is that important to us? Because God said so. If you don't have a church home, I would be honored to be your pastor. We would love to have you as a part of the St. Paul family. Listen, we're simple. We're a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Holy Spirit-empowered church of the living God, and we want you to be a part of our family. There's a place here for you, and honestly, we're missing something because we don't have you. So if you want to be a part of our family, you can come in person, you can come online. Listen, as long as you're coming, you are a part of the family. Go to our website, www.stpauloxandhill.org, and under the Ministries tab, there'll be a choice there for you too. 
Listen, thank you for joining us. Like, like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're getting our content as we put it out because we're about to put more and more content out because we want to be a blessing to your lives. If you want to support us financially, please go to our website, www.stpauloxahill.org and press the give button. There'll be options there for you. Listen, no matter how big, no matter how small, every dollar helps. You can give your tithe, you can give your offering, you can make a special gift unto the church. We thank you in advance because it helps us get the gospel out to the world. Thank you so much for your faithful giving. Now, hang in there one more second for the Williams Weekly Challenge. The Word of God tells us not only to be hearers of the Word, but also doers of the Word. Listen, you know what? There are times in life when we will find ourselves lost and adrift. There are times when the challenges of life, the complications of life, some of the things that we're going through will leave us not remembering who we are and whose we are. I want you to know, in those times when you're discouraged, in those times when you're scared, in those times when you're feeling, why am I here, what's going on, you have to remember what God said. Yes, in the chaos and confusion, in the, even, the, even the attacks from the enemy, you've got to remember you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're a masterpiece made by God and part of a royal priesthood. So my challenge to you, when you're going through, remember what God said and it will get you through. God bless you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.